Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Napoleon electric fireplace. So there's two different ways you could do this. You can either surface mount it like you would with the LCD TV or you can flush mount it if you have a built out in the wall like I do here. Now this is for a rental apartment and what I love about this is tenants as soon as they come in here and see this it's just going to be that wow factor and make them want to rent this place over any other. Now if it was my own personal residence even actually with this place my girlfriend and I who is also my uh, business partner. We had a little bit of debate because I wanted to clad this with tile, but she uh, she always keeps me on track when it comes to spending money. I'll, I'll be the first one to a bit admit, if I can speak, that I'm a little bit more of the uh, bougie one. I like to spend a little bit more money, but this is a rental and the whole purpose is to be making money. But we still added um, a darker color on the wall. I'll have that in the description below in case you like this paint color just to give it that pop and make it stand out for a future wall. I'll show you how to do this. Make sure that the power to the fireplace is off. So this breaker is off and we're good to go. The first step is you have to remove two screws on either side of the fireplace. And then there's four on the top. That way you can remove the glass cover. Now that I have the screws off on either end and the four screws off at the top and I've removed this bracket, there's little pivot points on either side so when you take this off you have to slide this off and up on an angle. Now there's four mounting brackets and it's up to you where you want to put them. There's two sets of holes so you can either put it here or here. I like to use the holes that are closest to the face that way the gap between the face of the fireplace and the wall is smaller if you put it there then you're gonna have a larger gap so if it's like this it's gonna be a little tighter when you're putting on your glass but it's gonna be a lot more streamlined looking We've isolated our power to our supply for the fireplace by turning off the breaker. I always like to double check, so I have a voltage indicator here. You can see it's dead. Now, you can either use the plug that it comes with or do it hardwired. So, I prefer to do the hardwired method. I have this on its own circuit, uh, 15 amp, even though this is 12 2. This is rated for 20 amps. I wanted to go a little bit overboard with the wiring. You don't have to. You can use 14-2 wire. So I'm just going to strip this and cut it in. So the electrical plate is just four screws that you take off and then you can put a cable connector, I call them a 30-30, there. Even though I'm going to be hardwiring it, I'll still leave the cord in there and have it hidden. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is write your white to white, your black to black, and your ground to ground. you have the moret twisted on, just give the wires a pull to make sure that they're attached firmly.
when you're putting the fireplace in, make sure that you have two people doing it, one person on either side. And then all you have to do is put four screws into these brackets. And the way I frame this, I'm going to make sure that uh, there's studs surrounding this entire opening. Depending on the way yours is, you may not have studs there. And if you don't, make sure that you use wall plugs because if you just have the screw hanging in the drywall, it's not going to be able to support the weight of the fireplace. Before we put on the glass front, you want to test it, make sure it works. Boom! Yeah, baby! Woo! <laughs> now it's time to put your blang blang inside the fireplace. Just these little cubes that look like glass. Now that the glass beads are in, you can just slide this glass cover. Now that the glass front cover is on, you put this on. What's nice about this is it covers any of the unfinished opening, so it all looks seamless. And then you're just gonna put four screws back in the top and two on the side, and it's done. It was too tight to put the screws on the side, even if you have, so I'm just doing them by hand with the driver. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit the thumbs up. And to stay connected, subscribe to my channel, and you can also follow me on Instagram.